We are not in control of what they do with your tax dollars, especially your social security. Is it gonna be there when you need it? You're not in control with what your pensions are doing and what your 401ks are investing in. You just think, well, I'm giving it, so hopefully I'll have a good retirement. However, you're not in control of where that money goes and who it supports. We've got some great stories on that. Also, you're not in control of the Red Sea. What's going on and how it's gonna affect your wallet. Those things you can't control. But there's a few things that you can do when it comes to your money and your cash and building up wealth for you and also safety and security for you. It's not just retirement. It's what can I do to make sure I have money for when I need it. Let's talk about it today as a prepper, as someone who wants to live sustainable. I have to make sure I put my money up in the safest places, but also where I control what goes on with it. Let's jump into it. Today's video starts right now. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so very much for being here today. If you're new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, that's okay. But let us know what you think about this video. Comment below and say, you know what, I'm doing this. You know what, I need to do this. You know, I've thought about this, but I haven't done it. Let us know because it helps us build a wiser community and to take care of our families. Now, let's jump into the stories and then let's talk about what we're gonna do. Just wanna hit a few headlines and then we're gonna jump into what we should be doing right now. There's a story that says that Social Security is now being funneled to a lot of illegal immigrants in these towns. We know that. We've talked about that in the last few uh, days. We're not going to beat a dead horse. But what it's showing is the money that you're funneling into Medicare and Social Security is actually not helping you as much as it may be helping who's needing it now. Well, that's okay for other American citizens who are paying into the system as well. But what's happening is we're starting to see a lot of those benefits, a lot of those federal benefits go straight to illegal immigration. There's a report that came out that said New York City is investing 53 million more dollars into uh, housing illegal immigrants. A lot of times they're using those funds that are federally granted for you and your retirements, but you can't control that. You have no opt-out policy. Now, secondly, there was a report that came out, of course, and we've talked about it before, with BlackRock. A lot of your uh, money that's sent to BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard, a lot of these holders of your 401ks and your equities and your stocks, what they're doing a lot of times with that money is they're utilizing it and putting it in things that you probably wouldn't support. So you're not in control of it. Yes, you are saying, hey, this is my money I put in here. Hopefully it'll be there to grow. But the thing is, they're not putting it in things that maybe can grow other than pushing agendas and initiatives. That is a big concern because this is your money. But guess what? You have no say on it because the market is so uh, overly bought and so monopolized by a few big players that pretty much BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard potentially own the market. So it makes it where you... You know, you may not can control some of those 401k investments that you're putting in. So you may be talking about it and getting mad about uh, all these things all the while you're actually supporting it. So you can't control your money. Thirdly, union jobs. If you remember, you're paying those dues in. I told you a long time ago, I think this is gonna come back and harm you. Unions are not helping you. Look at UPS, they just, they just laid off 12,000 based on the fact that they just raised the money for all the people where if you're wearing a brown suit, you're making six figures. That's crazy, crazy, crazy that we allow that manipulation to happen. Because what happens is now 12,000 people are without jobs. We've seen this with McDonald's. You know, we raise the rate to 15 to $20, all of a sudden they start firing people. What happens with these unions is you pay your money in to quote unquote help you negotiate. However, it's only going to negotiate for the ones they're keeping because they're going to fire so many of you and lay so many of you off because you're not in control of your money. You're not in control of the initiatives and the agendas passed by some of these big players in the unions. And then let's go to the shipping. Uh, UPS problems they're having. Of course, the Red Sea issues, they're saying shipping costs will hurt your wallet. There's a lot of things that we just talked about that you can't really control when it comes to your dollar bills. You can't control where your money goes. You can't control how it's making money, if it's losing money. You don't even say, you can't even say, I want it back without a penalty from your 401k, without buying goods that take too long to get here because of the shipping issues, or the fact that Social Security, no matter how much you pay in, you can't just get it back right now. It takes a certain age. So it's amazing they set policies on your own money that you've worked hard for. So now what do we do? As someone who 
really thinks about this because I want to tangibly be over my money. I want to do all I can to build up my own wealth and not depend on the government to tell me or my 401k with all the agendas it pushes or the fact that these union jobs, they're going to all of a sudden benefit me more and more and more for less work. All that's just a farce. So what am I doing with my money? So number one, ways to take care of your money. First of all, right now, you need to invest in things that go up in value. And right now, what's going up in value? Number one is gold. You need to look at options with gold. Now, you don't have to buy gold, but I think it's a wise investment if you're wanting to hold value. Number two, food. Look at the price of food. What investment do you have that's went up over 15 to 20% in a year? Well, we've had some food inflation up 30 and 40% over two or three years. There's not one investment you have in the 401k, especially with Social Security, or the raises that you're getting at work. None of that can equal 30 to 40%. So if you can, you start buying some food. You need to stop buying freeze-dried foods and, and keep up with that 25-year plans. But go here, here's your easy shopping list. $15, you can buy a pack of meat, one pound of meat for five bucks. You can buy three or four packs of rice, two or three packs of beans, and some salt. Now that's just a few things. You're like, oh, I can't live off that. Yeah, but you can turn around and make so many combination meals. You can preserve it, and also you have, you have dried beans, dried rice that last pretty much forever. Salt, which will help you season everything, that can get you by in a very bad situation. The next week, that $15, it may buy tomato sauce. It may buy canned foods, such as canned chicken, canned tuna. You have to learn to change that $15 uh, spread of food every week and then turn around and say, you know what, I can utilize this to eat, also have value in it because I'm putting it up on the pantry and it's gaining interest based on the fact that it's going up in price. If it goes up 15%, think of the money you saved. You saved 15%. So basically you made 15% because it's not costing you when you have to purchase it again. You have it on the pantry shelf. That simplistic look of food is so easy and so many people miss it. The fact that you're buying something that's going to go up in value, that means you're saving money and you're building wealth because you're not having to buy it at a more expensive time. Look at land. Do you see this? I just clear cut all this, this uh, pine right here. You know, it had bugs in it, it started brown topping, so it was not worth as much as it should be. But I said, you know what? Me and him, this guy that owns this truck, we can harvest the lumber. I don't have to pay for it. I'm actually getting my field to be open so now I can put more cattle on it. And then having pasture land is actually more valuable than having pine land. So we were able to take this, I was able to make, you know, a, a few thousand dollars, turn around, we can reinvest it in that land. And now I've got a pasture worth triple that price to then put cows on it, sheep on it, whatever on it, chickens on it, or I can turn around and disc it up and have a garden spot. So now you're you're put you're now you're putting value back in assets and land more than just well I'm gonna go buy food in town. Well I'm just gonna put a little bit more in my, a little bit more money in my 401k. You know I have real estate investments in the stock market. I'll just keep putting in those equity funds. I'll keep putting in those stock funds. That all sounds good. And that's what people want you to believe that that's what true wealth is. True wealth is finding value in tangible things. Gold food, land. Those things are huge. Now, land's expensive right now, but you could buy pieces of it. You may can buy an old cutover like we talked about in the off-grid situation where uh, the land has already gotten all the value off of it. They don't want to clean it up. You take time to clean it up. You're adding value back to something that you can tangibly see, you can tangibly sell too. That's another big thing. When it comes to building wealth with physical gold and with having food and with having land, if you need to get rid of them, you can you can sell them compared to your 401k and social security, compared to the money that you're making through contracts through the unions. Do you see how that works? It's not the fact that you're only building wealth, you're able to hold on to the wealth to then turn around. If you all of a sudden get in a bind, you can sell it and build back the cash or the money or whatever you're needing to utilize in other ways. It's called leverage and that is huge. 
before of this would be overstocking. Now, shipping has gotten crazy. So if you think you need one or two of one item, you may want to buy five or six of that item. It's kind of like the food. This also goes with you know sundries, miscellaneous, and things that you're needing such as goods. If you can overstock those and buy those, like we talk about as a prepper, when we're redundant and buying a lot of things, it allows us to save money in the long run because we're buying it and putting it on the shelf. And now here's what I get. Colby, I don't have the excess money. I'm just barely making paycheck to paycheck. Okay, here's what you do. You find a side hustle. Now don't say you can't find a side hustle. In the world of technology, you can sell anything. Have you thought about doing animal husbandry? Meaning, have you thought about raising dogs? You know those border collies I bought? I paid $1,000 for each border collie. That's a lot of money for some dogs, especially when I'm the kind that I usually just get strays off the side of the road. But what I did is I said, I'm going to invest in that line because I know that's a good cow, sheep, dog in a good area. And also the fact that people just like them because they're pretty, but they're a good guard dog too. Those dogs I paid two grand for, they had six puppies. So now I have six grand sitting in my floor in a little pool and that's not the only litter she'll have. So having another way to make money is a side hustle, but it's good ways to do it. I mean, that can go with your pigs. For instance, this, uh, these pigs that I raise, we raise them, we sell 20 to 30 uh, piglets a year. That's paying for our food, but also it's making another form of income. Eggs, soap, we make soap and we send it all over the United States. Why do we do that? Misty didn't just start making soap just to sell to everybody. She made it for us to save money, but then realized, hey, I can, I can sell this on Facebook for zero bucks. I can put it online for zero bucks. I can tell my neighbor I've got soap for zero bucks, and then all of a sudden I'm selling and I'm making money. And then it grows and grows because your product is worth growing. So side hustles are great. Think of ways that you can make money. I know people that answer surveys online and do little reviews online and make you know, a few dollars here and there. It can add up. It's not about making the get rich quick. It's about making the ones and twos and three dollars here and there to then add up to then now you got a stockpile full of cash. And lastly, don't be afraid to hold cash. Don't be afraid to tangibly have money. Money is not a bad thing. Now, yes, the dollar is going to struggle. Yes, the dollar is going to nothing one day, but it's not, we're not there yet. So you need to have it because when all else fails, the one kind of money that people can have in a grid down scenario, in a crep hits the fan scenario, and the fact that we need to go to my neighbor, they're not looking for Venmo. They're not looking for PayPal. They're not looking for a credit card that they can't run. They're not looking for all that. They're looking for bartered goods, which we talked about with animal husbandry and all that stuff earlier, or they're looking for food, or they're looking for cash. Cash is still king. Yes, cash will go away. Yes, don't stockpile and put all your eggs in one basket and put everything in cash because it can go away. But don't be so stupid and naive to think that you don't need cash. They're trying to get you away from cash, but ultimately you have to have it. I'm gonna bring up one more example. So I laugh, uh, and this has nothing to do with this, but it's an example about the cash situation. If I have this truck, you're sitting on a, a Dodge 2500 old truck, uh, it's a farm truck, but I can go to 30, you know, convenience stores within five miles and get diesel. Uh, and if it was a gas, I could do the same thing. What's happened is now you see this big push for electric vehicles. Okay. In my town, in my town, and I, I live in a town, well, I say in the county, I live in a county of about 25, 30,000 people. The town's about 12 to 15,000 people, and it's, it's not far from me. Now that town has no supercharging capabilities, no convenience stores that has a way to charge up your Tesla or your Volt or whatever you're using. You have to charge at your house and then if you go somewhere, you go somewhere. Well, I have an individual that works with me who lives about an hour away. Well, these cold temperatures has hurt his electric charge. So he has to literally drive an extra 20 minutes past me to a bigger city to charge, to then come back to work, to then go back to it 20 miles away from where he's driving to then fill back up or charge back up to then drive all the way back home. Now, the reason I bring that up is this. One thing in a, in a perfect world, having you know, a phone with um, uh, Bitcoin or crypto or having a phone with PayPal or having a phone with Venmo 
in a perfect world is great because it allows you not to be stolen from. It allows you not to have to worry about carrying cash on you. Great having a plastic or like a debit card. But what if all of a sudden you can't use it anymore? One problem, such as a grid down or a, a situation where you cannot utilize your funds because all of a sudden, for instance, Canada, the other day, a raccoon shut down the whole grid in Toronto for hours. Those people couldn't use Venmo. Those people couldn't use PayPal. Those people couldn't use debit cards. It relied back on bartered goods, the things you had, and cash. So the value of realizing that the supply and demand, that like that electric car, there's nowhere to charge it around here, so what value is it bringing to me? So when we talk about side hustles, when we talk about putting our money in things, when we talk about investments, make sure you're saying, okay, what can I invest in that's gonna bring value to where I live, that's gonna bring value to myself and what's gonna make perfect sense in the long run. Having you know a, a debit card or having a credit card or having a bank account or stock market portfolio, none of that's wrong. But when it comes down to it, is that gonna bring you the most value when something bad happens? Because remember, if you're not over those things, if you don't own the bank, if you don't have ways to drive to another place and get the goods that you had, what benefits you the most? What you tangibly can hold. And that's what brings value. Food, gold, physical gold, by the way. Making side hustles to build up more cash to then turn around and buy the things that can benefit you. And then having bartered goods and assets like maybe animal husbandry, like selling soaps, maybe making other things and preserving other foods to be able to sell to other people. Then you're making a difference. And then again, having cash. I hope this video helps. All it is is a reminder to realize that the simple things that your grandma probably would have told you is probably right. And we're going in full circle to realize how inept and how um, almost kindergarten level our budgeting and our financial institutions are to realize all we need is just to focus on having common sense about our money. Hold on to some cash. Buy some things that hold value like gold. Have food because survival wise, you gotta have food and water and it brings more value to you because it costs more and more and more every year because everybody knows you gotta have it. So stop filing and making sure you have all the goods that you need. Look at lands, look at animals, have value. That is what real value is. Not trusting in social security or 401k or your union. Give me your thoughts. Am I wrong or am I right? Hope you have a wonderful day. God bless, happy homestead y'all.